red bell pepper. This is how you use your cookware, right? You just smash it in the pan like that. Okay. Step on it, Wayne. Good man. No. Looks nice, doesn't it? A lot of food, lots of color, looks real good. Now, if you're going to cook all of this at home tonight, what would have to go into that pan next? Water, right, because if you put it on the stove with no water, what's going to happen? It's going to burn, right. So watch, here's what happens, guys. You take some water. Now, some people use a lot of water. Some people use just a little bit of water. I'm going to tell you that it really doesn't make a difference. And the reason that I say that is because whether you boil or whether you steam, when you finish cooking your food, you drain all the liquid off. And what comes out with all the water? Yeah, vitamins, nutrients, and then what do you do with all that good stuff when you're finished cooking? Yeah, right down the drain, exactly. Well, today we're going to cook with no water. I'm going to get every drop of liquid that we can out of our little pan. We're also going to cook at a very, very low temperature of only 180 degrees. Now, we know that it's 180 because when our pan reaches that temperature, you're going to see a little bit of steam coming out the top of the pan. Now, when you see the steam, all you do is you spin the lid. That creates a vapor barrier, and then you turn the stove off. Off. Isn't that easy? So when we see the steam, we're going to turn it off. Now, for comparative reasons, we're going to cook some vegetables the old-fashioned way. A little pan you could buy pretty much any place. We'll get some carrots into our pan. A little water to make sure nothing burns. And then I'm going to let you guys taste them both. With the water, without the water. This way you can tell me if there's any discernible difference at all. Now, we're also going to cook fried chicken. How many of you guys here like fried chicken? Yay. Now, if we're going to cook fried chicken at home, what goes in the pan first? Oil, right. And we use a lot, right? Because it's healthy, nutritious, low in calories, real good for your heart. Yeah, well, olive oil is good. I mean, if you're going to use an oil, that's a good one. But we're going to cook today with nothing at all. No oil, no grease, no fat, no nothing. We're going to cook in this pan here. This is called the liquid core electric skillet. Now, how many of you folks here have ever used an electric skillet before? All right. You know how there's a hot spot in the bottom? Things kind of stick to that middle area? Yeah? But we kind of solved that problem. And this diagram helps explain what's going on. See that blue bubbly stuff down there? That represents two cups of a patented oil that is permanently sealed inside the walls of the pan. As a matter of fact, if you shake the pan while it's hot, you can actually feel the oil moving around inside. It's pretty neat. What happens is that oil goes across the bottom and up the sides. That gives you perfectly even heat distribution, and it allows you to cook all of your food, like this nice, healthy potato that we have right here, in a totally dry pan. Isn't that neat? Isn't that cool? Can you hear the sizzle? Yeah, it's a hot pan. You want to preheat the pan like you preheat the oven. It's the same idea. And we're going to cook the chicken the exact same way. No grease, no oil, no fat, and no skin. Any of you guys know why we would bother taking the skin off the chicken? Why would we do that? Yeah, take away the fat, right? Take away the skin, take away the fat. Some people say take away the skin, take away the flavor. We're going to find out. That's a big one, isn't it? Nice big chicken breast with the bones still in. Now, I rinse it off just because that's what the health department tells us to do here. You don't have to do that at home. And we're going to put it into a totally dry pan. Isn't that fun? Now, if you happen to have a really small kitchen at home like I have here, you'll appreciate the sideways cooking that we let you do. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> but let's do this. If you're going to go home tonight and you're going to cook dinner, chicken, potatoes, vegetables, salad, a whole big five-course meal, how long would that normally take? Roughly. About hour, hour and a half. Yeah, one lady told me two days. <laughs> She did. She said a day to get in the mood, a day to do it. But that's part of the problem, isn't it? Who's got time to cook? We've got kids, jobs, lives, things we'd rather do. So we go out to eat, right? Yeah. Somebody give me a guess how much money the average family in America spends eating out at restaurants on a weekly basis. Per week. A thousand? <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> Not quite. <laughs> Almost, yeah. You know the national average, get this guys, the national average is $100 per week per family. Yeah, is that what you said? Yeah. Now think about this, if that's true, if you're average, $100 a week, that's $5,200 a year just going out to eat. That means every five years, that's over $25,000 just going out and going out and going out and going out. It's amazing. So let's make life a whole lot easier. Here's our timer. Now we're not going to set this for an hour or two hours or two days. What does that say? Trying to get to the 12. Is that good? 12 minutes? Is that about right? 
12 minutes. 12 minutes from right now, we're going to turn the chicken. 15 minutes from right now, we're going to eat the chicken. Wouldn't that be nice? Would be nice? How many of you guys would kind of like to be out of the kitchen in 15 minutes with a nice, healthy meal for the family? That'd be pretty cool. Well, let's do it. Chicken and potatoes, no grease, no oil. We have vegetables cooking with no water at all. Let's make a salad as well. You guys all like salads? Yeah? Oh, good. I like salads. Most people tell me that the only kind of salad that they eat is what we call a honeymoon salad. You're all familiar with a honeymoon salad? Yeah, lettuce alone. They'll get that lettuce alone, honeymoon, yeah. That's a horrible joke. You know the salad is worse than the joke? What's the nutritional value of lettuce? Nothing, yeah. Now stir-fried vegetables, that's a lot healthier, right? But what takes up all the time if you're going to make stir-fry at home? Yeah, it's a chop, 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 right? So watch, take your vegetables, run them through your kitchen cutter, and you're done. Isn't that cool? And what do those little pieces look like? And potato chips, right? Little ruffles with ridges. So run a potato through your kitchen cutter, just like I'm going to do with our yellow squash here. Put those potato chips on a cookie sheet in your oven, 375 degrees for about 10 minutes, and now you have a fat-free potato chip that tastes fantastic. Isn't that cool? Isn't that nice? How many of you folks like the idea of eating all the potato chips you like and never having to worry about fat? Yay! Having the right tools let you do that. It's pretty fun. Let's do some coleslaw. Anybody ever make fresh homemade coleslaw? Yes? Yeah, I like it. I think it tastes really good. How many of you guys have one of these around the house? Yeah. Well, the new ones come with band-aids now. They know you're going to need it. So let's make life a whole lot easier. This cabbage was 59 cents a pound over at Price Chopper this morning. The coleslaw in the deli case was $3.95 a pound. It's the same cabbage, isn't it? They just chopped it up for you, so they charge you 10 times more money. And how long has that coleslaw been sitting in the deli case at the supermarket? Yeah, I don't know either. This just makes it a lot easier, doesn't it? And it tastes better fresh, right? So that, that's kind of a nice thing. Now, the red cabbage does cost more money, but it's got a lot more vitamins. Iron, nutrients, vitamin C. It also has a nice color, doesn't it? Isn't that nice? Now, when your food looks good and smells good and tastes good, what do we do? But well, we eat it, right? Yeah. If it's healthy for you and it tastes good, well, then you're never on a diet again. Because now you're eating healthy food because you like it, not because somebody told you that you have to. It makes a big, big difference. But here's the question that I always get. People say, Charlie, why is the kitchen cutter chopping up all the vegetables so nicely, but it doesn't look like it's chopping up your fingers? Well, let me show you. Take your bare hand, put it right on the bare blade. Gives you the shivers, doesn't it? Yeah, backwards. That's okay too. Inside is smooth. Here's the trick though. If you put your fingers way back in the hopper, you get chef salad. <laughs> yeah, we don't want that. But every machine does come with a metal safety flap. It sits on top, runs the veggies through, so if the kids want to help, I'd put the safety flap on. Makes it really good. Let's do some onions. What happens if you start chopping up onions at home? You cry, right. See the skin? Leave the skin on the onion. Quarter it, just like I did here. Run it through your kitchen cutter. The gases that make you cry, most of those gases are in the last couple of layers, right there by the peeling. So we shred the onion, and we peel the onion at the exact same time. All that bad stuff goes away. All that beautiful food goes in the salad. Isn't that nice? Isn't that cool? How many of you guys like the kitchen cutter so far? Who's going to take one if it's a free gift? Stick around. That's what we do. That's what we do. Um, let's do some celery. Now, celery is a wonderful, wonderful, healthy food. But you know the strings on the back of the celery, how they get stuck in everybody's teeth all the time? You know what I'm talking about? Look at this, guys. Take the stringy part, point it towards the back of the hopper, and turn the handle. Use this when you're making soups, salads, stuffings around the holidays. All that nice celery goes right into your salad. And that really hard stringy part comes out the back and goes away. Isn't that cool? Isn't that nice? Celery with no strings attached. Ba -dum -bum. Wow. Now, one last thing we're going to put on our salad here. How many of you guys here like cheese on your salads? Yeah, I like cheese. But, you know, from a dietary perspective, what is the downside to cheese? A lot of fat, right? Now, they make something called fat-free cheese. I just don't think that qualifies as food. Yeah, it's not very good. So we have something completely different. We call this cheese plant. Anybody know what that really is? Yeah, it's a butternut squash. One little boy told me that it was Massachusetts. 
There's the cape, you know. That looks pretty good. Very healthy, really cheap, but you know the hard skin's a big pain in the neck to peel, isn't it? So look at this. Take the hard skin, point it towards the back of the hopper like we did the celery, and